Do you know how to recognize sound beats? So you are going to learn with me today. To recognize sound beats, let's do this experiment using the online tone generator. I have two windows open at the same time. In this first window, I'm going to play a note at 440 hertz. I'm going to the second window and I'm going to play a note at the same frequency. The sound is louder. Now I'm going to change this frequency to 441 hertz and see what happens. Now the sound is louder and softer. So what will happen if I change this frequency to 444 hertz? Now the sound is beating faster. For the last time, I'm going to change this frequency to 450 hertz. Now the sound is beating even faster. For the results of the online tone generator experiment, um, when I played both tones at the same frequency, we heard a louder sound. When I increased the second tone by one hertz, we heard an alternating louder and softer sound. When I increased the second tone up to 444 hertz, the result sound was an alternating sound but faster than the previous one. And finally, when I increase the second tone up to 450 hertz, the sound was pulsing even faster than the previous settings. So we can conclude that as the difference between both frequencies increases, the sound beats faster. So let's look the both frequency interactions graphically. Here we have both sound frequencies represented by the red and blue waves. They are traveling together and they are interacting with each other. So as you look, because both have similar frequencies, they are in some points in phase and some points out of phase. So we can spot here by observing crests and troughs. So right here we have destructive interference and in some points you have constructive interference. So let's pause this graph to look all these details. So as both sound waves combine with each other, we can observe some areas of complete constructive interference and complete destructive interference. So let's observe first the constructive interference. So here we have a crest with crest. We have trough with trough. We have crest with crest. Troughs with trough. Trough with trough. Crest with crest. Trough with trough. And we have also here, we have a trough with a trough almost. We have trough with trough, crest with crest, and uh, as constructive interference. The rest, they are a little bit difficult to align. Now let's take a look on destructive interference here in the center. So here we have crest with trough. So there is a destructive interference here. Here we have crest with trough. We have crest with trough, crest with trough. And we have more. So you can look here, there are clusters of constructive and destructive interference. When we combine those two sound waves, they have very similar frequencies. 
So now that we can see both traveling together, when they interact with each other, they are going to produce this pink wave that we can clearly see areas of constructive interference and areas of destructive interference. So the areas of constructive interference is when the crests of both they are aligned, they combine, and the amplitude increases. So the amplitude in this case is the volume. So that's why we have areas with high volume and they are decreasing very low volume and then they increase again, they are high volume. So we have an alternating loud and softer type of sound. So this is the pink one, the pink wave. This is our wave that is a result of the interference between both sound waves and this is called beat frequency. So we can recognize beats by listen, alternating loud and soft sound. When two waves of very similar frequencies combine, they create a beat frequency and the result sound volume fluctuates high and low caused by the constructive and destructive interference between both sound waves. So now the question is, how we can measure the beat frequency. So we have a formula to calculate the beat frequency as a diff the absolute value of the difference between both frequency. So let's do a couple of examples that we can apply this formula. So our first example, two speakers emit sounds of frequency of 665 hertz and 671 hertz. See, they are very close to each other. Um, what is their beat frequency? So we are going to use this formula and the order will not matter uh, because it's absolute value, so it will not be a negative number. So right here you have 665 minus 671 and the difference is 6 hertz. So this is the beat frequency. The second example, a piano tuner hears one beat every two seconds when try to adjust two strings, one of which has a frequency of 440 hertz. What are the possible frequencies of the second string? So we are using this formula. So the problem is that we have one frequency is looking for the second frequency of the second string and we don't have a bit frequency. So we need to calculate this bit frequency based on the information that was given here. So he here, the, the, the person hears here, one beat every two seconds. So this is the bit frequency. So the bit frequency will be the number of repetitions per unit of time. In this case, the number of repetition is one every two seconds. So the bit frequency is 0.5 Hertz. Okay, so now let's apply the formula. The bit frequency formula is the difference between both frequencies. So we have the bit frequency and we have one of those frequencies. So we need to find the second one. So in order to take from the absolute value, you just need to do plus minus right here. That's all that you need to do. So for this reason, we have two possible solutions. One is 440 plus 0 0.5, and the other one is 440 minus 0 0.5. So for the solution for this one, you'll be 440.5 Hertz, and the second one is 439 0.5 Hertz. So this second string has two possible frequency that produce two possible frequencies that will produce this bit frequency. So that's all that you need to know 
about bit frequency to complete your assignment.